All right, let's have a look at the integral of x squared plus 1 by x squared plus 2 divided by x squared plus 3 by x squared plus 4. So the first step to do is to simplify this integrand into some more manageable bits. So let's get rid of the integral for now. All right, the first step I'm going to do is to expand both the numerator and the denominator. So if we expand this first term into the second, we should get x squared plus 4 plus 3x squared plus 2 on the top divided by x to the fourth. Sorry, the first term should be the x to the fourth as well. Plus 7x squared plus 12 on the bottom. All right, so again, that's just a simple expansion of the first term into the second on both the top and the bottom. Now, if we perform some long division, we have x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2 divided by x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 12. Well, I, I hazard a guess that the dividend goes into the divisor just once. So if we apply the principles of long division, we have 1 times x to the fourth plus 1 times x, uh, 7x squared plus 12. So if we now subtract the terms x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is 0. 3x squared minus 7x squared is minus x minus 4x squared. 2 minus 12 is equal to minus 10. So we can say that x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2 divided by x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 12 is equal to 1 plus the remainder of negative 4x squared minus 10 on x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 12. The negative is common, so I take that out the front, and it becomes 1 minus 4x squared plus 10. And the denominator I'll rewrite as x squared plus 3 by x squared plus 4, so the original term. So now with this, We can separate the denominators by using partial fractions. So 4x squared plus 10 over x squared plus 3 by x squared plus 4 can be rewritten as something divided by x squared plus 3 plus something else divided by x squared plus 4. Alright, so the denominator is a second degree polynomial because we have an x squared term in both of them. And this means the numerator has to be one degree less. So the numerator has to be a linear polynomial or a linear term. So let me write the numerator as ax plus b plus the second numerator will be cx plus d. And these terms, these coefficients are the ones that we have to determine. So this is called the method of undetermined coefficients. So now if we recombine the denominators, we simply cross multiply the denominators into the numerators. So we have ax plus b by x squared plus 4 plus cx plus d by x squared plus 3. Okay, now if we expand the terms again, we'll get ax cubed plus 4ax plus bx squared plus 4b plus cx cubed plus 3cx plus dx squared plus 3d. And we can forget about the denominators for now. In collecting the like terms, we have x cubed common between a and c, x squared common between b and d, the x term is common between 4a plus 3c and remaining we have 4b plus 3d. Okay, so we've expanded and simplified the numerator and this is of course equal to 4x squared plus 10. And let me rewrite this as 
0x cubed plus 4x squared plus 0x plus 10. So then we can equate all the coefficients. So we have a plus c equals 0, b plus d equals 4, 4a plus 3c equals 0, and 4b plus 3d equals 10. Alright, so from this we can say that a is equal to negative c, and if we substitute this into, so we have 4 times negative c, because a is equal to negative c, plus 3c equals 0. This then simplifies to negative c equals 0. Alright, so negative c being 0, or c being 0, then a is equal to 0 as well. Okay, to find out what b and d are equal to, let's label b plus d equals 4 as equation 1 and this is equation 2. So with equation 1 I'm going to multiply it by 4. So multiplying everything in equation 1 by 4 I get 4b plus 4d equals 16 and let's call this equation 3. So let's subtract equation 2 from equation 3. So we have 4b plus 4d equals 16 minus 4b plus 3d equals 10. Okay, so 4b minus 4b equals 0. 4d minus 3d equals d, and positive d. And uh, 16 minus 10 is equal to 6. So we have the result that d equals 6. And of course from equation 1 we have b plus d, which is equal to 6, is equal to 4. So that means that b must be equal to negative 2. So after all that, we can say that 4x squared plus 10 divided by x squared plus 3 by x squared plus 4 is equal to 0x minus 2 on x squared plus 3 plus 0x plus 6 on x squared plus 4, which of course simplifies to negative 2 on x squared plus 3 and 6 on x squared plus 4. So if we rewrite the entire integrand we have okay and if I expand this negative into the brackets here alright so we have simplified the integrand to a form that we might be able now to integrate so if we integrate both sides on the right hand side we have three separate entities and so we can integrate them separately and here I've just brought the coefficients out the front okay so the integral of dx is just simply x now for the two remaining integrals we have an integral of the form dx on x squared plus a squared. So let's deal with the second one first. We can rewrite this as the integral of dx on x squared plus 2 squared. So I have made a previous video showing that integrals of this form evaluate to 1 on a by the arctangent of x on a. And I'll include a link to that video now so that you can study on how we derive this result. So with the integral of dx on x squared plus 2 squared, this simply results in then 1 on 2, if we substitute 2 for a, by the arctangent of x on 2. With this one, we can rewrite this as dx divided by x squared plus the square root of 3 squared. Okay, so the square root of 3 then squared is simply equal to 3. It's just a little manipulation. And this then equals 1 on the square root of 3 by the arctan of x on root 3. Alright, so that's quite messy, so I'll rewrite that. So the resultant integral is x plus 2 times 1 on root 3 by the arctan 
of x on root 3 minus 6 by the arctan of, sorry, 1 on 2 times the arctan of x on 2. So if we neaten this up a little bit, we have x plus 2 on root 3 times the arctan of x divided by root 3 minus 6 on 2 is equal to 3 times the arctan of x on 2. And let's not forget the all-important constant of integration on the end. So that's the integral of x plus 1, x squared plus 1 by x squared plus 2 divided by x squared plus 3 by x squared plus 4 is equal to x plus 2 on root 3 arctan of x on root 3 minus 3 times the arctan of x on 2 plus an integration constant. And of course it's the integral with respect to x. Alright, so I think that'll do it for this video. If it has helped you anyway, please share it, like it and subscribe to my channel. And these videos take me a lot of effort to produce, so I would really appreciate if you can make a small donation through my channel page or through my PayPal, and this will help me be able to make more videos for math students of the world. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.